On this week in fishing, we'll be talking kokanee, Golden Gate salmon fishing, we'll be touching on the Delta, um, we'll be talking high mountain trout, our destination this week is Hat Creek, and uh, I'm going to break down how you can go up to Hat Creek, have a great time, and catch a whole bunch of trout, whether you're a fly angler, or a gear angler, or whatever. I've been fishing that, uh, that river since 1986, it's one of my favorite spots, and uh, you should give it a try. Anyway, hang on, here we go, it's time for This Week in Fishing. Howdy folks, Kel Kellogg here. Lucy and I are out getting a quick hike in. Um, I'm living the dream, but I'm gonna have to keep this one short today. This is my uh, my what's hot and what's not weekly fishing report. Um, by the time you see this, I should have hit a couple different mountain lakes for trout, and I'm also um, scheduled to go out on a new easy rider and chase some salmon. So between fishing, shooting video, writing, training, and uh, taking care of my property, I'm a, I'm, I'm staying busy. Uh, anyway, let's jump right into the fishing. You know, let's start with mountain trout. I'm not gonna name any specific locations. It's early June. Um, we're at the kind of the tail end of spring conditions. We're kind of leading into early summer and the fishing is excellent. In the high mountains, the water's still very cold, um, which is good. When the water hits the 50s, the fishing's gonna, gonna go from good to uh, red hot. Um, down in the valley, um, places like Collins Lake, get the trout while you can. You know, the water's warming up. The fish are dropping down in the water column. Fishing's excellent right now, but it's definitely in transition. Um, and speaking of trout, that brings us to the uh, urban lakes in the Bay Area. Had a couple requests to talk about those, and uh, I fished those forever. And I can tell you, June is the time, if you want to get in on some trout, Get them while the getting's good, because those legs are about to switch over to catfish, and uh, you won't be finding much trout action down there until, you know, fall when it cools off again. So, make the most of it while you can. Go get those trout before, uh, before the season kind of comes to an end in the East Bay. Um, anyhow, moving on, black bass fishing. I don't talk a ton about black bass fishing, but for me, you know, I used to love to fish the spawn, but now, we're moving into the period where it's post spawn and that, that top water action starting to show up. And for me nowadays, my favorite time to fish is during that, that spring, that post spawn, early summer, when you get a lot of top water action. So I'll be out there after bass soon, hopefully. Um, anyhow, what's hot and what's not? Folsom Lake, it was hot. Now it's hit and miss. Um, you can still get out there and catch trout and a few kings, but it's not like it was two weeks ago when everybody was getting limits and near limits in power boats. Um, kokanee fishing is excellent all across the state. Um, Whiskey Town, Stampede, uh, Bullard's Bar, they're catching some nice fish. They're going all the way up to 16 inches now. Um, Stampede has some 16 inchers. Probably the best kokanee bite in the state is taking place at New Maloney's Reservoir um, where guys are getting quick limits of very nice fish. Um, you know, standard stuff. Standard stuff's working. We're gonna have great kokanee fishing in the state for, you know, another six, eight weeks and longer in some cases, but uh, it's definitely starting to peak. If you like catching those sockeyes, now's a great time to get out there and get after them. Um, the Delta, you know, I sound like a broken record. That striper bite just rolls forward, and so does the sturgeon bite. Excellent fishing. Um, I, that's another bite. Get on it while you can, because it's you know at some point we're getting we're getting there. The temperatures are rising. We're gonna we're gonna see the Delta transition into the summer mode, and uh, there's still gonna be some stripers around, but we're not gonna have the tremendous fishing that we have right now. Um, and definitely. For guys that, that aren't afraid to get out on the salt water, that is the hot action this week. Um, in the bay, the halibut and striper action in San Francisco Bay, it continues to be outstanding. Um, 
halibut to 33 pounds are being caught. Big numbers of halibut are being caught. Um, limits all around, you know, for the guys that, that know how to fish, that really spend the time at the rail. If you go out on a halibut trip, you're probably gonna get two fish. You might get a limit, you might get multiple fish, and you're probably gonna get a bonus striper or two. You might even pick up a white sea bass. So that's very exciting action. And the ocean salmon fishing. There's a reason I'm planning my first ocean salmon trip in about two years. I'm going because the fishing is red hot. Um, New Easy Rider had 40 fish the other day and uh, I'm hoping that bite holds up uh, when I get out there. I want at least one fish for the barbecue and of course I want to shoot some video and get a, get a cool salmon fishing story and all that. Um, New Easy Rider, there's, there's several boats that are good. Um, New Easy Riders is my favorite salmon boat. Joe and Joey Gallia, they're top hands, man. They, they know salmon fishing. Um, they put me on a lot of good fish over the years. I've had some, some great days on that boat. It's a fast boat. Um, anyhow, I'm really looking forward to that. I haven't been on the saltwater yet this year, but spending all my time trout fishing. So that's really about it. Shasta starting to improve on the trout fishing front. Always got to talk a little bit about Shasta. Elmanor remains excellent. Um, Eagle Lake, excellent this spring. Um, Brian Ricucci continues to catch big rainbows up at Elmanor. Um, in fact, I was thinking of going to Elmanor, but uh, instead I'm going to hit Frenchman's Lake. That's a location I've never been to before. And I'm going to hit Davis. Um, I'm all excited about Davis. So that's my plans for the week. Frenchman's, Davis, and Golden Gate salmon fishing. Anyway, this is Kel Kellogg, here comes a car. I'll catch you next time here on my weekly what's hot and what's not fishing report. Sounds like a logging truck, let's check it out. Oh, that's what it is, they're doing a lot of logging out here. He's slowing down so he doesn't kill me. Anyway, I'll catch you next week folks. Kel Kellogg, signing off. brown trout. That's a native trout. We want to get him back in the water, but I want you to see that fish. What a beauty. Look at those spots. Planet Berkey. Couldn't lay off that Panther Martin spinner. It's awesome. Brook trout, brown trout, and lots of rainbows. Um, those fish you just saw me catch, well, they were caught at Hat Creek. Um, and I'm, I'm so passionate about that creek. I've been fishing it since 1986. It is a phenomenal spot. Access is outstanding. The trout numbers are through the roof. It's heavily planted. There's plenty of wild fish. And it is just a great place, you know, to go check out. If you haven't been there, I would highly suggest you putting it on your list of places to visit this summer. It's still running high right now, but it's dropping into shape and guys are already catching lots of fish there. So let's kind of take a look at the stream. I'll kind of explain what the stream's all about and uh, we'll go from there. So Hat Creek springs to life up in Lassen National Park, actually on the shoulders of, of Mount Lassen basically. Um, for the first several miles, it is a small stream. Um, 
it, it's home to a lot of small trout, um, some little brookies, mostly rainbows, and a few tiny browns. But uh, on that upper section, say above the town of Old Station, a big fish is, I don't know, a big fish is probably 11, 12 inches. An average fish is six to seven inches, and, and you'll get some little guys too. But it is a fun stream to catch and release, fish with a fly, um, pinch the barb down. You can go in there and catch 30 or 40 fish a day, take in some awesome you know, scenery, volcano country at its best. Um, that's a lot of fun. My favorite stretch of the stream is from about the town of Old Station down to a place known as the Bridge Campground. That's several miles long. In that section, the river is growing. It's big and deep and fast flowing. Um, for a long time, it was very brushy. Um, and it, it that really kind of, while there was a lot of fishing pressure, there were a lot of spots that you couldn't fish. So it was home to some very large native browns. Those fish are still there, but there was a forest fire a few years ago and access is much better. So I'm sure some of those big wild browns have been caught, but there's still plenty of them in there. Um, the river is heavily planted with brook trout and uh, rainbow trout. And, and there's, you know, there's plenty of pan-sized browns too. I, I believe those aren't planted though. That's a natural, you know, population. And I keep kind of vacillating between calling it a creek and calling it a river. Well, in, in that, that middle section, it's very river-like. I mean, there's holes that are 10, 12 feet deep. There's white water, there's boulders, there's gorges flowing with white water. So it, it's called a creek, but uh, it, it's a lot like a river, so. Anyhow, as I said, there's access all along that stretch. It runs right aside of Highway 89, and uh, everywhere there's a bridge, the DFW and the PG&E, well, they plant it heavily. The bridge campground is, is very heavily planted, and most of the other bridges are planted as well. And those fish, some of them hang out at the bridge, and that's where you get your big, you know, attraction of people, but they do spread out as well. So most of that stream, if you're willing to hike, you're gonna find excellent fishing the whole length of it. Now, once you get down past the bridge campground, the river goes into some private property for a distance and it pops back out near a little community called Castle. When it comes out of Castle, it has totally changed character. It's big, it's wide, it's slow flowing, and the trout are, they're starting to get really selective. The water's moving slow, there's a lot of fly anglers there. You could catch them on bait, you could catch them on spinners, but uh, that's more fly fishing water. I fished that for years. One of the biggest brown trout I ever hooked was caught in that section, and I gotta tell the story, I'll make it fast. It's evening, I'm with my dad, probably 17 years old, we're fishing little tiny dry flies, mayflies, it's starting to get dark, and we're catching fish, and they're challenging to catch, they are not easy to catch, so it's, it's a lot of fun when you hook one, and they're chunky, mostly rainbows, a few browns, you know. So we're walking back, and got that shine on the water, and I see a fish rise right by the bank. So I said, watch this, Dad. And uh, earlier in the day, my dad had been looking at my net and it had a, a hole in it, but we're catching trout that weigh up to maybe two and a half pounds. So this seemed like an issue, you know? So, toss my fly out there. I see it like it was yesterday, a number 18 yellow and white mayfly imitation. It floats a little bit, slurp, the fish takes it. I hook the fish and he's immediately, all the fly lines gone out of my reel and I'm into the backing and this fish is, he's going absolutely crazy. And I'm, I'm playing him, I got two pound test tippet on and I'm playing him and playing him and playing him and I'm wearing him down and now it's fully dark and my dad's got a flashlight and this is the old school before we had headlamps and stuff. And uh, I'm playing the fish in and my dad jumps down in the water and he's got my net and he's knee deep in the water and I'm getting glimpses of this fish and he's huge and he's yellow and he's spotted and he's a big brown with a big hook jaw and uh, my heart's thumping and he's dead tired and my dad reaches down and he scoops him up and the net rips and the fish falls through the net my line's going through the net the fish takes off and he snaps that two pound test and like it's two pound test. I don't know how much that fish weighed, six, seven pounds, something like that. He was big, I mean, he was 30 inches long. He was, he was a trophy. So anyway, for all I know, he's still swimming around in there. He's pretty old now though. But uh, anyway, that's my castle story. So 
once it comes to the Bridget Castle, when you go there, there's a post office and there's a bridge and there's some kind of building there that uh, I don't even know what it's for, but the water flows through that building and when it comes out the other side, it's in a kind of a cement lined canal. It flows down for maybe a mile. That whole canal offers excellent fishing, whether you're fishing flies, subsurface flies, spinners, spoons, bait. Go right on down, down, down that canal, excellent fishing. It ends up at a pond. The pond is kind of a water holding area. Again, it's heavily fished, heavily stocked, lots of fish in there. And then it, it goes from the pond through this apparatus that removes weeds from the water, which is a trip. There's always a big pile of weeds there. It goes down a pipe, it generates electricity. There's one more general regulation fishing area down there that's heavily planted. There's always a lot of people there. I don't fish there much, but you can go there and catch a limit most, most days. And then beyond that, you get into the special regulation fly water. There are monsters in that special regulation section. They are fished for by some of the best fly anglers in the state, in the country, in the world. They are wise fish. They are highly selective and they are very hard to catch. Um, I fished that section religiously when I was fly fishing a lot until I caught a fish over five pounds and I said, you know what? Quit and went on my head. I caught a five pound rainbow. I'm done. So I haven't fished that section since. I much prefer that section between the bridge campground and old station. I like the fast water. Um, I go down to Castle once in a while in the evening and do some dry fly stuff, but uh, I like that high water. I like, I like catching a lot of fish. I like the action. I like hiking that stream. After this message, I'll be back with my top tips on how to fish the stream and how you can go up there and catch a limited trout. On this week in Fishing's Tactical Tip, we're going to be taking an in-depth look at how to fish Hat Creek. Now, in the upper section of Hat Creek, say from Old Station up to Lassen Park, I like to fish it with fly tackle and dry flies. You know, traditional small and medium-sized dries like these will work, but what I really like to fish is a, uh, is a grasshopper imitation, something like this. Those work extremely well because it's the high country. The fish are aggressive. They have to take a meal when they can get it. They know what a grasshopper is and they will come up at all times of the day to smack a grasshopper fly. Um, afternoons are best, but you can go out and easily catch 30 or 40 fish in a session just hiking along, presenting that fly. It's a lot of fun. I let them all go. They're mostly small fish. But uh, there's nothing, nothing as fun as top water and that grasshopper fly, man. It really draws those fish out and they hit it with a lot of enthusiasm. Um, having said that, I, I fish that upper section once a year, once every couple years, just to, just to get in on that, on that awesome top water bite. But mostly, I fish the middle section of Hat Creek, the big white water section from Old Station down to the bridge campground. Now that area is great for bait angling, bait anglers rather. Um, three main baits, crickets. You know, take a spinning rod, put some split shot on the line, put on a, put on a hook, and dead drift crickets. That works extremely well natural colored or yellow salmon eggs like these. These are the oil pack natural colored eggs. They work great. Red eggs work too. I found that the naturals and the yellows work better than the red ones, but that, that's kind of my mileage. Your mileage may vary and uh, you may just like fishing those red or orange eggs, but uh, give yellow ones a try. They work great. And you know, the third bait is the dirty old mini crawler. Um, I don't fish those much. Usually I can get to fish on crickets or eggs from bait fishing, but uh, Absolutely, want some, want some night crawlers or mini crawlers in your cooler just in case. Um, I don't fish bait on that section of the stream very much anymore. I mostly fish with hardware. 
Sometimes I'll, I'll drift nymphs on a spinning rod, and they work very well fished on a spinning rod. You catch a lot of fish that way. But most of the time, I'd say about 80% of the time when I'm fishing that middle section anymore, I'm throwing hardware, and I'm primarily throwing two lures. One, I'm, uh, I'm throwing the, uh, or my all-time favorite spinner, the yellow and black quarter ounce cast or a panther martin it's not a cast master panther martin yellow and black that is my 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 favorite spinner for hat creek i'm getting all excited just thinking about it that almost always produces for me whether it's browns uh, brook trout rainbows whatever they all like it those fish you saw me catch in the beginning i caught them on the on the yellow and black uh, panther martin so Silver panther martins can work at times, especially when it's overcast, a little extra flash. Sometimes that works. Um, and if I'm gonna fish a spoon, I reach for an eighth ounce gold cast master. I found gold to be the best and the eighth ounce size is about right. Um, so I've had, had great results on that. When you're fishing your, your spinners and your spoons or a wet fly, don't be afraid to let it hang next to the bank in that fast water section because there's a lot of undercut bank, there's a lot of fish under your feet. You let that lure hang there for several seconds, work it a little bit, you'll be amazed how many times a trout will shoot out from underneath that bank and grab that lure. So, you know, that, that's just a good way to go. Just because you're near the bank doesn't mean you're out of the strike zone. There's a bunch of fish up under there. So, anyway, moving down, down into the castle area, um, the spinners don't work as well down there, at least not for me. So. I primarily rely on bait, on black woolly boogers if I'm going to fish a fly on a spinning rod, or the gold cast master. And that, that's my favorite lure. If I'm fishing hardware down in the castle area, I'm going with a spinning rod rather than my fly rod. I'll almost always be throwing the, uh, the eighth ounce gold, sometimes copper, but, but almost always the gold cast master. I've caught brown trout down there up to 23 inches on that lure. It works really well. I've caught a lot of limits on this. Um, in that canal area, um, bait anglers do well. Salmon eggs work great. And a number eight black woolly booger works good too, but you gotta put enough weight on the line to get it down near the bottom and then slow roll it back. And you'll catch a lot of fish doing that. If you're a fly guy and you want a challenge, um, I would strongly encourage you to work that uh, special regulation catch and release section of the river. It, it's amazing. There are huge trout in there. They are fished, you know, targeted by some of the best fly fishermen in the world. They are extremely hard to catch. Um, they're very large and uh, it's worth putting in your time. I would encourage you to do what I did though. Wait until you get a big one and then retire. I caught a five plus pound rainbow down there, haven't fished it since. I quit when I was ahead, and that took me many trips to get that fish on the end of my line. These days, I prefer fishing that middle section. There's a lot of enthusiastic fish in there, and uh, you know me, I like to have my rod bent, so that's my deal. Anyway, if you haven't been to Hat Creek or you haven't been to Hat Creek in a long time, I would strongly encourage you to pay the, pay the river, pay the creek, a visit this summer. It's uh, it's one of our great Northern California fisheries. Get out there and get a trout on the end of your line. Don't forget those cast masters, the panther martins, a few wet flies, uh, maybe a light fly rod if you want to check out that upper section, and uh, of course your favorite trout baits. Don't forget the salmon eggs. You never know, some days you gotta use bait. But uh, as I said, most of the time, I get them on lures. That's kind of my overview of how to catch trout at Hat Creek. I've been at it up there since 1986. I don't necessarily fish it every year. I fish it every couple years. It's a fantastic, uh, fantastic stream to fish. And I hope these tips help you go up there and catch a limit of brookies or browns or a mixed limit of all three species. Anyway, another tip coming up next week. Catch you later.